Hey everybody, what's going on? This is your boy Jordan from Jordan Comes Live Directly on YouTube. Thank you very much for coming back to my channel. And if you're in here, welcome to my channel. Before we start, please, you know, smash that like button and subscribe and hit the bell notification thing. So whenever I post something new, you get the notification and then you jump in the comments and say, hey, I got the notification. All right, so listen. Today, we are going to watch Jim Jeffries talking about Donald Trump. Are you guys ready for this? I am totally ready. Jim Jeffrey is one of my favorite comedians of all time. And yeah, let's start watching. What? Right. That's my best friend. That's my best friend. Now, every time I've recorded a special, the other specials I've recorded in America have been in New York, San Francisco, and Boston. And everyone's called me a fucking pussy with my liberal agenda. <laughs> well, I'm in fucking Nashville right now. <laughs> and if you want to shoot me, now's the perfect time. <laughs> There's eight cameras on me. <laughs> I think we're good. I think we're good. Isn't, isn't it sad that the country's gotten to the stage that when you buy theatre tickets, you go, oh, get, get ones on the aisle so we can run. <laughs> Everyone wanted to get in the middle. We're like, no, no, you're sitting ducks in the middle. You'll... <laughs> so anyway, Donald Trump. Now, don't get me wrong. He's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, come to think about it, as... Much of a, of a disaster Donald Trump is, he is fun. Or let's say funny for me. Like it just, it just cracks me up that, and it's all, it always like shocks me whenever I think about how Trump is the president of the United States. The most powerful man in the world is Donald J. Trump. <laughs> Just like, you know, I want you to just stop everything and just focus and imagine. Like, you know, just remember that Trump is the most powerful man in the world. Yeah. I know. I know how, how crazy that feels. Yeah. Yeah. It's just fucking crazy. I can't even... Like, I really can't believe it. I really can't. Be it's It feels like a fucking nightmare. Anyway, let's keep watching. <laughs> there's, and there's a little bit of me. There's a little bit of me that when, uh, like, that thinks, fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it and see how fucking crazy <laughs> shit can get. Because he just, because what happens is he says really simple shit that means nothing and then fucking dummies, right? If you've ever said this sentence, I like him because he's a straight talker, you're as dumb as shit. <laughs> Just because someone says something simple that you understand <laughs> doesn't mean they're a straight talker. You can say complex thing and be telling the truth. But like, because he goes, I'm going to make America great again. And you're like, I got every word in that sentence. <laughs> I got every word in the sentence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, seriously, the most bizarre thing ever is the wall. Is the wall. Like, it just like, he actually wants to build a wall. <laughs> and you know, like, I just read uh, an article a few days ago that all 
the walls that he actually is trying to build, all the like samples of the walls he's trying to to, to build are actually breachable easily. Like the one, the one they're gonna actually build, it's like steel, uh, just like, just like you know, I don't know what they call it, just like a set of like steel columns you just put them be beside each other, and they showed that somebody actually already cut it. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens. And he and he wants to fucking build a wall, like wall, <laughs> like see. Oh my god. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> You're a straight talker! <laughs> and then he just says shit that it won't happen. Gotta build a wall, Mexico's gonna pay for it. <laughs> well, I haven't heard of Mexico. <laughs> Seriously. Like the the idea of Mexico gonna po pay for it that, that that was just magnificent, all right? Like like, and also like like the crazy thing is like whenever you ask Trump how you're gonna pay for the wall, he's gonna tell you a different story, okay? One time he's Mexico gonna is gonna for, pay for it, and and then he said, hey, he it, Mexico is gonna be pay for it uh, indirectly because of like some kind of. Uh, uh, you know import and export treaties and then and then he was like uh, I'm gonna pay for it from the it just like he never has like a clear answer how he's going to actually pay for the wall yeah uh, and he actually wants a, a wall yeah you guys go ahead and build the wall <laughs> I'm sorry that's fucking crazy like yeah he just, nah. walls don't work Mexican yet go, oh yeah, we got this. What are you talking about? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? That's just saying shit. He's like a kid running for class president who's just walking around going, and we're gonna have two lunches. <laughs> and there's gonna be a soda machine in every classroom. <laughs> Nashville football rolls! But here, here's where it doesn't get fun. And that's all. It's good fun. But here's where it's not fun, right? What he does is he preys on fear. As soon as he, at the beginning it was, oh, Mexicans, they're coming over and they're raping. And there was a, there was a terrorist attack and he went, oh, fuck, I'll go after the Muslims. Ah, oh, we should kill the families of Muslims, which, by the way, you're not allowed to do. Uh, we, and then it's just, and then he started saying, after the Paris attacks, we, we, we should... We should put every Muslim on a register and we shouldn't let any more refugees come in from Syria. And the Muslims that live here on a, refu uh, on a register, it, you, that means is is win. As soon as he says that, is is a fucking won. Right? Because their plan to shoot people in Paris, that's not a, their end plan. They didn't kill 128 people and go, <laughs> ah, that's that done. You know what I mean? It's a recruitment tool. And it can only, the recruitment yeah. tool can only work mm -hmm. if hate is bred. Right, so what he does is he says, oh, we're going to ban them. We're not going to let any more in the country. And the ones here have to be on a register. Now, you're a 16-year-old boy or girl that's a Muslim living in this country. You've lived your entire life in this country. You've always considered yourself American. And then all of a sudden, someone who could be your president says, you are not welcome here and that you should be put on a register. Now, that kid... How fucking quickly do you think that kid could be radicalized now? Before, it wasn't going to be radicalized at all. Yeah, guys, like, uh, about the terrorist attacks, like, most of the uh, terrorist attacks are, are like, uh, like, executed by homegrown terrorism, all right? So what, that, what does that mean? Like, when you look up, like, when you actually study the terrorist attacks, you find that, it's like Muslims who lived in that particular country because they're like they have okay of course the, the, the recruitment uh, tools uh, like recruitment tools like what he just said like when he when they see like when they when these kids see like their government like they live in France forever 
since they were born and the government the people every everybody treats them wrong and at the same time they have access to like fucking crazy uh, imams and stuff like that and then they get radicalized because they feel alone and mm, like what they call it I don't know divided I don't know something like that it just they feel by themselves in that community that it's supposed to be for them so like most of the like terrorist attacks that happen in Europe and in the West it's like it's not refugees it's mostly homegrown terrorists okay uh, yeah he, he's he's telling the truth and by the way you know like Jordan is not included in the in the Muslim ban for traveling to the US but for some crazy reason I can't have my laptop with me on flights from here to America I have no idea why yeah that's why I can't I can't go to the US for me I need my laptop with me all, all the time I can't live without it you know it's just it's my life everything I do in this laptop I can't just not take it with me right anyway thank you. So what he's trying to do is, he's trying to defeat hate with hate. And hate doesn't beat hate. It's never fucking beaten hate. It just makes more hate. Now, this might be the most hippie thing that ever comes out of my mouth. <laughs> but it's true. The only thing that can beat hate is love. Now, love doesn't always beat hate. Okay? It don't. It doesn't always beat hate, but it does do something, right? Now, think about your own personal life. Think about a person who hates you and you hate them. From now on, just show that person nothing but love. Now, I'm not saying for a second that that person will start loving you. They'll probably still fucking hate you. <laughs> but one thing will happen. Eventually, everyone will see them as the asshole. Don't be the asshole, America. Don't be the asshole. See guys, that's why such comedians add a lot to our lives, you know, make us think and because they're talking about the real issues. Somebody like George Carlin, Louis C.K., Ricky Gervais and like and Jim Jeffries. These guys, as silly as they can be and as dark as they can be, they are always telling the truth. And that's why we love them so much and that's why we appreciate them and that's why we deal with them as like you know the watchers upon our timeline because without these guys calling bullshit we will have absolutely no one calling bullshit seriously like what the fuck is going on like when you think about it somebody like Trump being becoming the most powerful man in the world he ran on hate he he just like amplified the whole fucking craziness in the United States and he became a president because people are scared and when people are scared they just choose the obvious I guess yeah anywho you know I like this kind of comedy because it's funny and also it gives you uh, an excuse to talk about the real issues like yeah what, what he said about uh, Trump and the Muslim ban and and the wall everything like when you think about it it's actually funny you know what the fuck is he doing but at the same time it's actual real issues that we me as somebody from the Middle East uh, from like the other side of the world and you guys from the United States now we're having a good conversation about it and now you know how I feel and please you know tell me how you feel about the whole situation in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and smash that like button and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace the fuck out. That's my best friend.